Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be explaining granular synthesis. Granular 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 synthesis is kind of a catch-all term which is used to describe anything that processes audio using the concept of granulation. This is where you take an audio signal, which could be anything really, it could be some samples or it could be some different waveforms, and you divide them up into these little slices called grains. According to Curtis Rhodes in his fantastic book Microsound, a grain is defined as a slice of audio between 1 and 100 milliseconds in length, but I have also seen definitions that say below 50 or even 20 milliseconds in length. These grains are then played back, but crucially, you don't have to play them back in the original order. Also, you can play multiple grains at the same time, which can lead to really nice textures or clouds of sound. Now, when you're playing back lots of little bits of audio, you're going to want some fades on the beginning and end so that you don't get a lot of clicks and pops. And the shape of these fades is called the window or the envelope. And the way that you fade between these sounds has an effect on the overall timbre or the quality of the sound. So you can get kind of harsh sounds or you can smoothen it out. So to summarize, granular synthesis refers to the method of creating sounds by taking existing audio, chopping it up into tiny little grains, which are themselves comprised of the chunk of audio, and an envelope, and then playing back these grains in all kinds of weird and wonderful ways. But why is that useful? Now this is the Nebulae, and Qubit Electronics have very kindly sent over this new module to help demonstrate these concepts. They refer to the Nebulae as a granular sampler, as it primarily works with audio samples as its material to chop up into grains. And you can see here that there's a little USB stick which you can load all your different samples onto, or you can also record samples using the inputs on the front. So this sound that you're hearing right now is one that I recorded, and Qubit actually asked me to record a few sounds to be included on the memory stick that comes with every Nebulae, so if you buy one then you'll get this sound and a few more um, from other cool artists, so that was really awesome. So one of the most attractive benefits of granular synthesis is how flexible and elastic it makes sound feel. So for example, you can super super easily stretch and compress the timing of a sound in real time, completely independent of pitch and this enables a kind of slow motion sound, which is pretty popular. And if we actually think about what's happening here, the nebulae is chopping the sample up into grains and repeating these grains to give the illusion that it's uh, lasting longer. And you can start to hear, if we really slow it down, you can start to hear some of that repetition going on. And that's what gives granular synthesis its kind of digital glitchy aesthetic. And of course, you can also speed up a sound and the opposite happens. So you're taking out grains to make it a shorter sample. And with the nebulae, you can reduce the speed all the way through to reverse, which is really nice. And then again, reverse quickly or reverse slowly. And again, that is all independent of pitch. So that's a really, really key uh, benefit of using granular synthesis. So we can pitch things up and pitch things down and it doesn't affect the speed at all. Now the ability to independently control pitch and time is actually quite a big deal because before digital audio the two were inextricably linked. If you recorded something to tape for example and wanted to slow it down the pitch would lower as a result and likewise if you wanted to pitch something up the only way to do that would be to speed it up. Now this is also true if you're working with digital audio without granulating it. So if you just want to stretch something out, you're in effect playing it back more slowly and therefore the pitch is going to decrease too. However, now a lot of DAWs like Ableton have integrated granulation into their sampling tools, so you can re-pitch or re-time samples and each process won't affect the other. This decoupling of pitch and time is also really useful for sound designers and it gives them a huge ability to shape and mangle sound into all sorts of different sound effects. Another really popular use of granular synthesis is to create textures or clouds of sound. And using this way, granular synthesis can turn pretty much anything into a really beautiful ethereal soundscape. So it's really great for ambient music and soundtracks. So what we've got here is a sound from Marcus Fisher, which was on the USB stick here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of process it a little bit with the nebulae. Maybe we'll reverse it. Maybe pitch it down a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to stick it through clouds. 
and you can hear that like immediately it's just blurring everything together and making it sound just really gorgeous. So these two combined, I feel, make a really, really great combination. And honestly, I don't really understand how all this magic works, but I think what's going on here is that it's chopping up the sample from the nebulae, uh, which has already been processed by the nebulae, of course. And then it is uh, taking all these grains and blurring them and putting them in different orders. Um, we can see with the density knob, in fact, if we turn this all the way to wet dry, so this is a completely uh, wet signal, take off the reverb, um, you'll hear if I change the density, you'll start to hear little slices coming through. And then we can of course add this little reverb and maybe even a little bit of feedback. And we just get these really beautiful soundscapes. And all of this is made possible because of the granular synthesis techniques used in the nebulae and the clouds. Okay, so I set up a nice little patch here using a few different granular techniques and I just wanted to show you kind of what's going on here. So if I take it down to the first sound, what we've got, in fact, if I just take off the clouds as well, we have the nebulae here, and that is the Marcus Fisher sample, which I was uh, demonstrating earlier. And we've got it on a reverse speed and uh, some lower pitch, um, but we're also controlling the blend using Chance's smooth output here that's being malted out here to control a lot of things. Um, and we're also controlling the size of the grains uh, using the discrete output. So that's jumping between uh, shorter and longer grain sizes. Um, and then when we put that through clouds, what we're doing in clouds is pitching that up, I think it's two octaves, um, and also adding a bit of reverb as well there. And then we bring in the next sound going to turn clouds down there. This is Pluck from 2HP and we are sending pitch information from ARP here which is being clocked again by chance on the uh, rhythm output. Um, and then we are also controlling the dampening of the Pluck um, again using this uh, malted smooth output here that just kind of makes the sound brighter and duller. And then that is going through clouds same kind of process, pitching it up and giving it some reverb. And then finally, what we have is just a nice kind of low bass drone from the STO. Again, the uh, wave shape of that is being uh, modulated by the smooth output of Chance. Again, that's what it sounds like dry, but adding clouds, get that nice reverb and octave up. So if we add them all together, this is the final result. Which I think is a really nice, beautiful, and a patch here. And so what I find the nebulae really good for is these nice kind of beds and atmospheres. Um, and then you stick something like the pluck or rings over the top of that. Um, and again, having some kind of low drone to underpin it all and it just sounds really, really nice. Um, so that's what we can do with granular synthesis. Now, if you want to have a go playing about with granular techniques, then there are lots of different options available to you. Obviously, if you're in the modular world, there is the nebulae and the clouds, just to name two. Um, but there are many different examples of software that also uses this technique of granulation. Lots of DAWs these days enable you to alter pitch and time independent of each other. And in fact, Melodyne, the popular pitch correction plugin, also uses granulation to achieve those results. But for the more drastic, and in my opinion, more fun uses of granular synthesis, there are still a whole bunch of options. Ableton has the granulator, Fruity Loops has the granulizer, Reason has Maelstrom, Native Instruments has Absinthe, and Soundtoys has a really excellent pitch shifting granular reverse echo called the Crystallizer. But probably the most in-depth granular plugin that I've ever seen is the amazingly named Crusher X, which my friend Andrew showed off in one of his recent videos. I'll link that down below. 
They have a demo available if you want to check that out, and I definitely recommend it if you're looking to get into granular synthesis. If you want to learn more about how granular synthesis works, I would definitely recommend Microsound by Curtis Rhodes, and I'd also recommend checking out the work of Zanakis, who was a kind of real pioneer of granular synthesis back in the day, and he initially achieved these results by taking tape and cutting it up into tiny little pieces and rearranging them, and then pasting them back together, which, you know, it's gotten a lot easier since then, so I'm thankful for that. I'm also gonna leave some online resources in the description below. So I hope that this video has helped to demystify granular synthesis a little bit. Uh, if you wanna help support these videos, you can check out my Patreon and Bandcamp pages. And I really wanna thank Qubit for helping out on this video as well. I'm loving the nebulae and I can't wait to see how it keeps changing my patching. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. granular synthesis.